Hello and welcome to another segment of Delaware State University Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is the show where we talk with faculty, staff, administrators, students, alumni, and even people from the outside to talk about the things that are going on in the world and some of the things that are going on here at Delaware State University. Today I have Dr. Sam Huff, who is a George Washington Distinguished Professor of History and Political Science here at Delaware State University. And I've got him on the show today. Hey, welcome, Dr. Huff. Hey, Carlos, how you I doing? got you on the show today because we got midterms coming up. And I want to make sure that we get a good understanding of what all this means. We hear a lot of talk out there. And uh, I, I, want, I want to tap your expertise here. You know, uh, with respect to the midterms, people that oppose President Trump are hopeful that the Democrats gain the majority in the House, okay, thinking that impeachment is going to be the result. Um, <clears throat> supporters of, of Trump are very concerned about this. Uh, okay, so before we talk about the specter of impeachment, what are your thoughts on the, the chances for the Democrats in the midterm elections? Well, of course, midterm elections uh, include uh, all House members and a third of the Senate. And the rule in political science is that the president's party usually loses seats in the midterm election. In fact, since the early 1900s, we've only had four instances where the president's party gained seats. Uh, the Republicans have been in control of both chambers since 2014. Uh, Democrats took control of the chamber in uh, 1998 and 06. Republicans took control of one chamber in the 2010 elections, and then, as we said, the other chamber in 2014. So the question is, what's going to happen in 2018? And obviously, the president and a majority of both chambers are Republicans, so we naturally would start off by saying that it looks like... Uh, one or both chambers could switch. As a matter of fact, we've had one or both chambers switch every midterm election since 1986, with mm -hmm. the exception of 1990. Mm -hmm. So my prediction is the House will go Democratic. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Senate is fluctuating back and forth, but it too could turn. It could turn too. Okay, let's talk about impeachment a minute. Now, because now the, the, the equation that opponents of Trump are banking on is Democratic majority in the House equals impeachment equals removal of the president. Now, just to be clear with everybody, let's define impeachment. And according to the definition I have from the Constitution, impeachment means that a president, vice president, or civil officer can be re impeached and removed from office for treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. <clears throat> Okay, but is it really that simple? Okay, let's say we have a Democratic majority and we have enough votes there for the impeachment. Does this mean Trump's out? Well, if you look at the record, most likely not. Now, in American history, we've had 19 folks uh, impeached by the House of Representatives. Four of those were civil officers, including two presidents, a senator, and a secretary of war. None of those folks were found guilty after they originally were charged with uh, high crimes well, by the House. Well, let's look at the case of the president. My, okay. my understanding of history, Andrew Johnson. Andrew, Andrew Johnson. And Andrew Johnson, okay, Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton. That's correct. They were both impeached. That's correct. Think of the House as a grand jury of people who are going to determine whether there's evidence to send it to the next level. And the next if level is, is the, Senate, the Senate, where all uh, senators serve essentially as the jury, determining whether those charges are um, true or not, and then voting. And if they vote by two thirds after the House votes by majority to go ahead with those charges, then the person would be removed from office. We have had instances where 15 federal judges have been impeached, and eight of those have been found guilty. Let's, let's assume that the House is going to go to the Democrats, the majority. Let's also think about the possibility that the Senate does the same thing. So we, if we have a majority in the House and a majority in the Senate, Senate, this is a real possibility. Impeachment and the second stage where the Senate votes him out of office. Well, once again, uh, it's difficult. Uh, you think of the two-thirds um, majority and it is unlikely that the Democrats would uh, take over the Senate such that they would have uh, 
67 or more members. So that would enable the Republicans to block things in the Senate if they needed to, if it got that far. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> impeachment is not the only possibility here. There's a thing called the 25th Amendment. Explain what that is. Well, that was interesting that that's been discussed uh, lately. 25th Amendment does two things. For the first time in American history, it allows a president who has succeeded the office because of the death of a sitting president to actually name a vice president who would then get voted on by both chambers of Congress. And if approved by majority, that person would serve as vice president. But it also, for the first time in American history, deals with the question of what happens if you have a sitting president who becomes incompetent in office and is not able to discharge the duties of the office. It allows for the vice president and a group of cabinet members or a designated group of members of Congress to essentially declare that the president's incompetent. Then there's a process by, whereby the president could react to that. And if Congress or that um, other group uh, disagrees with the president's response, then there's a 21 day period for which there can be a determination mm -hmm. of whether those uh, charges are accurate or not. And then there would have to be a vote. But in my view, the 25th Amendment as a way to remove a president is more difficult than impeachment right. because both chambers have to vote by a two-thirds margin. That's in a supermajority. That's a supermajority. Right. I mean, the only th other areas of the Constitution that has that, uh, if you think about it, is a veto override or a proposed amendment, which requires two-thirds to propose and three-quarters mm -hmm. of the states to ratify. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to remove by the 25th Amendment. I, I think the original... Um, purpose was a bipartisan determination um, in the unlikely event of, of the president being incompetent or a, a life-threatening illness um, such as uh, President Eisenhower encountered a couple of times right. during his term, which actually was the impetus for the 25th Amendment that was ratified about a decade after that. Okay. I, in, prepar in preparing for this show, I picked a picture similar to this. We ended up going so, but I tried to find a picture where he was concerned. He looks concerned. <laughs> Should the president, after all we've discussed, he seems to have weathered every storm that's come upon him since he's become president, and even before when he was a candidate. Should he be concerned? Well, I think the president certainly has to look at his own uh, popularity, which uh, is uh, for this time in American history and for uh, this juncture of a presidency inordinately low, um, that's certainly a concern. Is it a record low? Um, not necessarily, because when you look at presidents on their way out, like Richard Nixon before okay. his resignation, that was in the but 20s. But at this time in their presidency. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, so but what the unique thing about President Trump is he's ruling by uh, essentially minority politics, mm -hmm. by his one third group plus some other supporters. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that he can do that. But certainly he should be concerned if one or both chambers flip as a result of the midterms. Okay, well, give it, let's say he weathers the storm. In 2020, mm -hmm. we have to choose between Trump. We have a candidate right here on this campus running against Donald Trump. Dr. Sam Huff. Show that. Give me that piece of paper there. Sam Huff has filed with the Federal Commission Agency uh, federal, uh, federal Election Commission, Commission, excuse me, to run for president in 2020. And this is not the first time I understand you've run for president. It's actually the ninth. The Carlos. ninth time. Uh, since uh, I got my PhD at uh, SUNY Stony Brook in New York, I attended something called an alternative presidential convention in 1984. Third party minor candidates who got a stage to talk about their campaign. I, I was enamored with that. And so uh, I teach the presidency. So I, I ran for the first time in 1988, partly to show my students what it takes. And I've continued to run since um, every four years. And obviously, uh, if you count those, that's eight. And then 2020 will make nine. The title of my campaign is uh, For Times O Plenty, Vote Huff President in 20. Well, we've just about run out of time here. We have run out of time. So we wish you the best of luck on your candidacy, and we're going to have to have you back on to 
talk more about what's going on in Washington and with our presidency as it exists right now. And maybe we'll come back after the midterms terms and analyze what has transpired with that. So thank Very you for good. being I've on enjoyed the it. show today. And thank you for joining us for another segment of Delaware State University Inside Perspective. Everyone have a good day.